top five tourist destination in Africa in 2022 based on international arrival according to global data traveler demand and flows database. Number one, Morocco, 8.7 million arrivals. Number two, Egypt, 7.9 million arrivals. Number three, South Africa, 6.8 million arrivals. Number four, Tunisia, with 6.1 million arrivals. And the last is Zimbabwe, with 1.6 million arrivals. 2019 was declared by African Union as the year of return uh, for African diaspora. And a lot of African Americans from the Caribbean as well as other, uh, South America travel to Africa to visit the continent. I am Abdul Rashid Abubakar. On today's episode, I have Councilwoman Wanika B. Fisher. She is a Democratic member and represents District 2 in Prince George's County in Maryland, United States. Welcome, Ms. Wanika uh, Fisher. Thank you for having me. Ms. Uh, Wanika Fisher also travel to South Africa. I'll be talking to her today on her experience and trip to Africa to the continent. Can you uh, tell my viewers what was your impression of Africa after visiting South Africa recently? Um, it was amazing. I went to South Africa in my teenage years, in my 20s, so it was nice to revisit after a long time. Um, you can just see the culture and the people, um, which, was, which was fantastic. I think some of the infrastructure needed a lot of improvement and still does, but it was a wonderful experience. Prior to you traveling to Africa, your background, you have very strong tie to the continent, uh, being that your mother is from South Africa, your dad from Nigeria. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I was, I was born in the United States, but my dad is Nigerian Yoruba. He was born in Lagos. My mom is South Asian, South African, and was born in Durban and my family's been in Durban for about 300 years, a long time. And so like everyone else, they came to the U.S. looking for a better life, and I was born here. Um, so we went um, and visited when I was young, and uh, we still, I still have like direct family and first cousins and things like that in both countries. Okay, so what, I, what would you say to Americans who want to visit African continent? They need to book a ticket tomorrow and go. I think, um, the continent has so much to offer, whether it's culture, food, experience. And I think especially for my black American uh, brothers and sisters, there's a connection to your roots and your heritage um, that you don't get unless you actually go home to visit and see. Um, and I think we have to spend our money in our diaspora. You know, I think our, our, we have been socialized to vacation, have a second home somewhere else when you can do that. Um, back home. So I'm, I'm lucky enough that my, my parents, not me, my parents um, have a second home in South Africa and we love it. And that's part of why um, in my previous role as a state representative, our government asked me to go on our sister. We have a relationship with South Africa. So I was able to go this November um, to sort of work on sort of some of our business development and government issues um, that we have. So I would say go, book your flight, go, go, go. Be safe, know where you're going, do some research. Know, know where you want to visit, but I think you should go, and I think the continent, and in particular, you know, um, is welcome to receive you back home. So was that your first time in South Africa? No, that was my third time in South Africa. So your first experience with the continent, how do you feel? From my first one or this one? Your first one. My first one, I was about 14 years old, and I think it felt, um, it was so much a part of my journey to my identity. I think growing, I grew up in New York, um, and there's so many people, but you can get, especially in the 80s, you can get lost on who you were then. I don't think we were having the same conversations about where do you come from. You know, my parents, it, they didn't mean to, but they came from a generation that was like, assimilate, assimilate, assimilate. Um, and I think going home, I got a sense of who I was. Um, and so it was just an unforgettable time, and. Um, 
see where my mom grew up and my grandparents and um, it, it was great because I have a small family here in, in the U.S. I don't have like, I'm only related to nine people in the United States, that's it. All so, of my family is abroad after that. Wow. So what are your thoughts on Black History Month in America? Um, I think it's important. I don't think it's enough, but I always like to look at the glass half full. So even um, Black History uh, Month is critical because our system does not teach everyone's full history in our public schools or our elders in our community don't know that history. So I think it's important to have that light on it, but I think it needs to be Black History Month throughout the year um, because black history is American history. Um, and I think when it comes to learning more about our diaspora is learning black history. Um, and so I even in my district, I have an event this weekend um, on February 25th from 12 to 3 at North Brentwood Community Center and North Brentwood is really cool in my district in Prince George's. North Brentwood was the first African-American settlement in Maryland in 1924. Wow. And they, and that's what, that's why I'm having it there. So when Prince George's County were known to be the black county, right? Right. When blacks were moving there, the white commissioners would not provide services. So what happened was the residents would incorporate and make settlements and levy their own tax. And so North Brentwood is the first African-American settlement and it really got started off of the GI Bill. Um, and so it's like knowing that history, you're not gonna learn it on the textbook on Monday in class. Wow. You have to go out there uh, and know that local history. And it's really, it's really, really amazing. And it's still um, a prominent black area in my district today. So do you think the black Americans have achieved the fairness, justice, and uh, equity? in America? No. I think it's part of a journey. Um, I'm someone that I do look and see the improvement. I mean, um, I can get emotional about a lot of things, but I think when I first saw my name on the board in Annapolis at the State House, and I was like, this State House was built by slaves, and I am here leading a debate on any issue. I've carried reparations in Annapolis for the last three years. A new delegate has the bill. I mean, to me, I never thought those things were possible when I was young. I didn't think people would vote for someone named Wanika. I used to want to go by my middle name, Beatrice, because I would tell my parents, why'd you name me Wanika? No one's going to vote for me. Um, so I do think there has been progress and change. I see that in all the work I did on police reform here. But you have to attack the cancer, which is slavery and racism, right. which is why I'm, 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 I'm for reparations, which is why I'm for, you know, marijuana reform is being discussed right now. Um, are we, 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 we're legalizing it, but how that's going to work out. Because a lot of things we discuss are band-aids. You know what I mean? You can't treat cancer with a band-aid, right? You need chemotherapy. You need to go and, and attack the disease. And I think, um, so I think black Americans and I think Africans and pe brown people as well, we are making strides in the United States. I, I always tell people, well, where does everyone else want to go? That's better. I don't know. But what I do know is we are constantly working to a more perfect union and it's going to take effort. You know, we have a, a, basically a saying in Telugu, which is, you know, uh, destruction is fast and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Right? True. Progress is slow and painful. Right. And you have to tend to it. And that's, that's the reality, I think, of where we are. Uh, thank you so much. It was nice uh, talking to you on the uh, Traveling with Abdul Abdul Rashid Abubakar show today. I will continue to explore uh, some other topics uh, you know, pertaining to the African diaspora uh, with Councilwoman Wanika B. Fisher. Is there anything you would like to say before we go on the show today? Um, just an honor to be here with you, my brother, and it's, um, I'm really excited um, to explore our diaspora and I just encourage everyone in our diaspora that you are here and we all care about back home, but you are here and your voice matters here. And to also get involved uh, for the things our community wants um, here in, in the state of Maryland and to advocate for that. So I just encourage your viewers um, to make sure that they do both. Thank you so much. And until we uh, meet again, I am Abdul Rashid Abubakar. Thanks.